The Nerd Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Hello there, and welcome back to the number one contender podcast, the show where your favorite nerds talk all things movie trivia showdown. I am your host, Jared Bachman Stubbs. And on the show today, as always, we got black leader Travis Grossman. I want everyone to be aware this sprite hasn't moved in at least an hour. And I guarantee it will explode on me as soon as I open it. Yeah. Ready? It shockingly didn't. Big if true. I <laughs> Look, man, I'm like eight for ten. Like eight out of every 10 sprites I open explode. <laughs> Such a specific stat. Um, I made it up, but it's like, it's at least that high. I, I believe you. I believe you completely. We have our first matches of season eight, ladies and germs. And oh boy, was it one hell of a night. We just finished watching the main event. And now we're going to recap both matches. So... Anybody who didn't actually read the title and is not able to watch the match as it aired, or you're waiting for it to be on the YouTube channel, anything like that, if you don't want the match spoiled for you... Go away. Get off Twitter. Now. Get off Facebook. Get off all the things. We're talking about it. Yes, we are talking directly about it. So, you've been warned. Going to talk about the undercard first. We're going to talk about this big Star Wars match: Molly Damon of Dungeon of the Dungeon versus Laura Lights Out Kelly. Yes. Of Shazam, but what? Did I say Shazam? You did say Shazam. <laughs> of swag, uh, but just swag. Just swag him. Swag sham. Swag is kind of a sham right now. It is in shambles. Shazambles, if you will. Shaz- Swag shambles. Swag shambles. Uh, but yeah, so up top, we already had the... We had, we had a bit of a moment with Laura Kelly. Clearly not thrilled to no longer be with corruption. I think right now nobody seems to be thrilled with being in swag. Based yeah. on our, our current uh, pool of, of subjects. But, I mean, she played... I would say pretty good. She didn't miss once. She had a perfect game. I, the only perfect game in Star Wars that I can even think of off the top of my head was uh, Demolanta's match against Joseph Scrimshaw last season. I'm sure there's been one. I can't remember a single one. I like all the fatal five ways in Star Wars Celebration, the five way. To be fair, she did not have to answer her five. She didn't have to answer her five. But that's still a perfect game. Either yeah, way. yeah, like, it's still a perfect game. But like, like, that's basically a diet TKO, not having to answer your five. Um, like this delicious diet sprite. Yeah, <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, Laura kind of got the ball rolling with the Winston Marshall is over party. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> I almost call him Winston Duke every time. Every time, yeah. And if memory serves, part of that is helped by um, it was the free for all right after the first trailer for us dropped, and he came on stage doing what Winston Duke's character does in the trailer, where he's standing outside like violently gesturing at the tethered family with the baseball bat. Where he's like, "You want to do this? We can do this." He's like smacking on the bat. Um, so it doesn't help that they're both named Winston and I always want to call him Winston Duke and I always want to call Winston Duke, Winston Marshall. It's like how I can't tell the difference between Meryl Streep and Glenn Close. Um, same person. 
Yeah, she started the. She was wearing a corruption shirt for the beginning of the match. And what do you mean for the beginning? I don't know why. I said the, for, for 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 all of the for beginning. all of it. She didn't do any costume changes, but it started, and I think a lot of people all went, "Oh, <laughs> in unison." Um, you saw it on Twitter before I did. Mm-hmm. Even but though, I didn't realize even I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, so you responded to it without seeing it on Twitter. Which yeah, is is, even funnier. Yeah, shitty service at work. Listen, I saw. I saw Shannon Barney wishing luck to Laura. I saw well wishes to Laura, and I saw that she was had a Kendrick Lamar quote in there. I couldn't not respond in some way. I was just like, hey, yes, lights out, Kung Fu Kenny. It's all right here. Let's go. Um, so, yeah, Star Wars match. It was insane. It was, yeah, a lot closer than I thought. It, well, not closer, but like. Only two misses the whole match, both of them mollies. Um Yeah. I think uh I think we're finally getting to start get a look at what a Star Wars division looks like when no one has their eyes on Alex off the bat. Yeah, we were talking about this between matches, and I think you made a really good point that this is the beginning of people no longer if Alex the people not making Alex the center of their Schmodown universe. Yeah, I think so. Part of why Ace did so well last tournament, I think, is in part because, because like, I think everybody, for the most part, unless you were like on the Demolanta train from the beginning, put Scrimshaw and Kelly at the end of their brackets and then went, one of these two is going to win that match and play Damon. And, uh, you know, at the end, Ace, Ace won, Demolanta made it to that end. Um, and I think for all parties, except for ACE in that tournament, they, they had their eyes on Alex without having their eyes on the match in front of them. And some, like if both people are doing that, then it doesn't matter. It kind of cancels out. But when one player ACE is going into every match going, I just need to win this match. Like I'm, I'm dialed in right here. I need to win right now. I think that makes a huge difference. And I think that's. What people are starting to realize the Star Wars division's about now, because like points going to your division matter more than getting the belt, especially in Star Wars. And I think that, you know, if you can win, you know, if you can get to Damon, then focus on Damon. But until then, why focus on something that isn't in front of you for Star Wars? I agree with you. And I think that what we're going to learn because of this and hopefully more players having this outlook on it is that we kind of develop like a rock, paper, scissors type environment that it isn't just, well, if I can beat Damon, I can beat anybody else. You know, like everybody, everybody, Kaiser said it, Jen Sturger said it, Molly's level of play tonight was had, still incredible. Was incredible. And against, pr- I'd probably say, like, with the exception of a Joseph Scrimshaw or an Andrew DeMolanta, would have won with that performance. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, I like the South Ridge question was is probably one that I think most other players would have missed. What was the other... I don't even remember what the other question was she missed. Oh, uh, the name, uh, uh, the the Rebellion Admiral who was like, who was leading the oh, space yeah, yeah, yeah. battle of Scarif. Um, yeah, I don't remember Vin who Diesel. she said. It was, yes, it, was it was Vin Diesel. Diesel. It, was, it was the Mon Cala Admiral Vin Diesel. Um, um, I was surprised you didn't know one know that one because the... The your, Huh? Yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. For those of you who are I new hate, here, I hate that shit. <laughs> Tra- Travis has a little bit of a hyperfixation on the whole no maneuver. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a, a, a smidge. Um, not in like a weird phantom menace way. No, 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 no. I do. Uh, one one day, I'm going to figure out if it would have worked with the next wing on the Death Star. I've been too lazy to try, but I want to figure it out. I think it'll be easier to figure that one out actually. But, um, no, I. This is a really great match. I think Laura's really, you know, putting down 
where she wants to be. I think, you know, she said it going into her first match with Alex Dame. And I think that's why people held her so high is that she had been one of the people in the tournament who had played Alex and, you know, came within striking distance comparatively. Um, that now that she's had that experience, she played in the tournament. She's she's ready. She's ready for that tournament. Sh- that tournament shot. That title shot. I thought you said tournament shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. And yeah, I think I think Molly's not in a bad position either. You know, uh, I I think Demolanta v Damon. You know, if it's not going to be the blowout that, not a blowout, but you know, if somehow Damon loses, we're in a completely different uh, division after that. I will but. say, again, I I do want to reiterate Molly Damon incredible performance tonight. Like, again, the fact that it required having a perfect game to beat her says something. Um. And I think prove the point we were making that the whole like, well, she's Alex Damon's wife dialogue is kaput now because that was a performance on the level of her husband, Mm -hmm. you know, so no longer is it just, oh, they're married. That's why it's no, she's just as much Star Wars explained as he is. I am curious moving forward. However, Andrew Dimolanta versus Alex Damon turns out. Because I think that shapes the rest of the season. I think that shapes the rest of the season. And, you know, we we will be talking about the precedent for rematches because <laughs> that's a that's a thing now. Um, and. Even though we were rooting for Mara Kanopic, I think Travis and I both agree with John Drew on that, that he yeah, will get there. We'll get there. Um, I saw Shannon starting to use the hashtag free Laura after congratulating her on Twitter for a perfect game. So let's continue our hypothetical from last week of Dimolanta wins. Mm-hmm. And throws the Star Wars division into a tailspin and it's pure chaos. If Laura, again, if because Laura will go toe to toe with whomever wins between Damon and Demi the Demi Hunter Demi. and Damon, and I'm assuming they're going to give the auto rematch to Damon should he lose before Laura gets her shot. Probably. Because I think it would be kind of jank to do that the other way. Yeah. Um. And again, I don't again, I think the precedent is set already that that's the that's like the turn order that happens. So let's say Laura Kelly, who is clearly unwillingly a member of SWAG. takes out either Andrew DeMolanta or Alex Damon, whomever has the belt. What then happens with her as like, as a tradable player? Like, what do you Laura- offer Winston Duke at that point? For Laura <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Winston <did> Marshall. <laughs> For a belted Laura Kelly? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Um, and I think that's why she's going to try to make her move before that happens. I think she needs to like, I, 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 she, you and I, like we both looked at each other for, for two reasons. One, it's, it's untradeable at that point. No one's ever going to trade a belted player. It's just not going to happen. Especially, especially one that won the belt without the help of her manager. Yeah. Right. Like if, if Laura somehow, Beats whoever has the... I'm going to assume Damon. If she beats Alex Damon, managerless, she is invaluable at that point. Like, you could not trade Winston anything for her. I think she's... I know I know. people like to talk about, like, the Rushmore conversation with Schmodown a lot. Um, 
if Laura Kelly was not already on your Star Wars Rushmore, her going in, you know, assuming that the whole I'm not, you know, Winston isn't really managing me. I'm just here. Assuming that's not entirely assuming that is not entirely kayfabe and that that is legit, that like Winston has nothing to do with her training and practice. And Laura wins that belt that has not moved for we're going on four years now. Yeah, she, like like she like not only is she on your Star Wars Rushmore, she better be where Washington and Li- or Lincoln are, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and the other thing too is you want to get her beforehand for the points. Right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. You know, even if it, she doesn't win the belt, then she gets to be in the tournament. Yeah, because like title shots, especially for the tournament. But like, and that and that's the thing with if Damon loses somehow, right? If if it happens, now those eight points are up for grabs. And and even if he loses and then beats Demolanta back in the rematch, right? Like seeing that he can bleed is enough to suddenly go, oh, those eight points are actually up for grabs now. Instead of just giving them to the stars outright, I think that's really important. Because again, the, right now your goal is I'm going to rack up points in the Star Wars tournament and in these other division matches. And worry about the title if I get there. If you suddenly see that, like, oh, hey, you know, someone can beat Alex Damon. Someone, you know, and now it's Andrew Demolanta, and I think I can beat Andrew Demolanta, or like, you know, I think I can catch Laura Kelly on a bad day. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I all think of a sudden, those, true. Those, no. eight, those eight points open up, and that's huge. Well, that's like, you know, and I, I this is like a very, you know, very different comparison, but. You know, everybody thought climbing Mount Everest was impossible. And then one person did it. And then within a year, like eight other people pulled it off. Yeah. It's it's like, like once you break that mental barrier of clearly you can do this and survive. Yeah. I think Star Wars becomes way less impenetrable and slightly more competitive. Um. So, yeah, I think Shannon needs to make a move to get oh, yeah. Laura back home. By the end like, of the month, by by the end of March, by the end of the weekend, like well, should, <laughs> I think. Quite right, I, I yeah, I'm being yeah. hyperbolic, but realistically, she has probably until the end of March. I agree. I um, yeah. So, as for who, I have no idea. I genuinely don't know. What do you throw him, Scrimshaw? Maybe <laughs> that's probably your best bet because, like, you're not going to trade away anyone from singles or doubles. Well, because that, that's another thing. I'm sorry to cut you off. Because I want to say this earlier. So many of Shannon's most powerful players, you have the current singles champ and Adam Collins, her boyfriend and like the founder of corruption, Mike Kalinowski, and his teammate. And you're not getting rid of any of those. Was, yeah. So I mean, like, and I think trading Star Wars for Star Wars is the most fair way to do it, right? Because like, and to trade powerhouses of that level makes sense. So I think that could work if she tried that. And if, especially if Scrimshaw is like, yeah, I'm open to working with Winston. I don't really care. Who I'm with. He doesn't seem like the kind of person who cares about where he's being managed from. So I think that's your best bet. I, I do too, because Winston's clearly made up his mind that he wants to do this this weird tightrope act of having two Star Wars powerhouse players. You know, like, look at every other faction. They have more than one Star Wars player. Every faction has more than one person competing in Star Wars. However, it's, here's, here's, here's the, here's the big one. Here's our A tier Star Wars player. And here's somebody who's maybe less proven or hasn't been around as long, or maybe they're a rookie, something like that. Where there's kind of like an A, B, A, B, A, B. Winston went, fuck it, A, A. <laughs> In yeah. a very confusing way, because I, again, I think you're asking for your faction to get cannibalized. It was like what everybody was saying about Kaiser in the dungeon last season. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say, because like if... I don't think Ace and Kelly are the kind of players that would cannibalize each other. But 
I think it's Winston kind of mismanaging a little bit. I agree. And biting off more than he could chew with it that has really done him in. Yeah, I think by when I say cannibalize, I don't I mean more so exactly what you just said. Okay. Is that like you Not- naturally are going to put a lot of, you know, tender love and care and time and resources into your heavy hitters. It's kind of insane to have two Hey, two hitters who hit that heavy <laughs> in the same room. If that makes sense. Two heavier's that hit that or heavy that hit. Yes. You can't see because the headphones, but there's smoke billowing out of my ears now because my brain just the gears are stuck. I I want to know because. Winston on backstage this week made it sound like everybody was cool in the gang. I think everybody's cool in the gang. They're just not cool with him. Like they're cool with each other. They just don't like Winston. I want to know what happened. I I cannot wait. Good job. You made me really excited for swag. I guess I want to watch it fall apart at the seams now. I just, cause like, I mean, we'll get to Chandra in a minute, but I, I think Laura's upset that she's not on corruption. I think Ace is upset because he wasn't Winston's first pick. And because of that, you have these two really good Star Wars players that feel betrayed by their manager. And some not, you know, Laura doesn't feel betrayed by Shannon, but um, it's that like she's pissed that she's now playing for the second yeah. fiddle uh, faction. And I think that's really what's biting him in the ass. And we'll see what happens with that. Do you want the big pillow? No, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I only backed up my chair because I have a bit for later, but. I saw you back up your chair and I saw that you weren't resting your back against it. And I was doing that while we were watching the match and I hurt my back doing that. So, you know, I'm good. I, just... I, I, I already have the comfy chair and I also have the pillow on it. So I didn't want to be a hog. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I have to, I have to do a thing later. It's fine. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. So, okay, I so we we were in agreement that Shannon is has to make a play for Laura very oh, soon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. If, if she can do it before the Demolanta Damon match, that is preferable. Especially because a scrimshaw playing this month, I don't remember. I want to say no. Van then, will pull up the document. Yeah, because if he's not playing and he isn't, like, up for a match right away... Yeah, okay, he's not playing. Yeah, the Star Wars matches we have up, coming up in March are... In fact, it's her other player. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is when you make that trade. You're, you know, focus on Sean Sullivan, make sure he's ready for his match. In the meantime, offer up the trade of Scrimshaw for Kelly. Um, That's the other thing, though, with, like, the, the, the ABAB strategy, the Star Wars players, is that, you know, you keep making a Star Wars reference here, you kind of get to have, like, a Master and Padawan thing going on. Yeah, like you get to have somebody who, and I think Winston been, still benefits from that trade because he still keeps his AA status. Yeah, but I think that I think that having the master Padawan layout, that AB thing, you have your A getting better at the trivia by being on both sides of it, and you have a B that is getting training from your A. It's efficient, like it's good. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, yeah, I think that's like the most superconducting thing. I think that's, I. So I can't remember how many Star Wars players the stars have, but like, the stars, in my opinion, is a faction that can do AA and not have to worry about it. Absolutely, and like, because you have, because you have a player who can just rest on their laurels. Yeah, and. I think the other thing with the stars is again, assuming Damon doesn't lose and assuming we go into a star Wars tournament, because at that point, if, if we go into a star Wars tournament and Damon's still champion and he hasn't lost the belt in between, they got 16 points just off of those two title matches, you know? And yeah. at that point yeah. you're locking in another eight. Like at, I, if I'm Roxy Stryer, I'm going into the Star Wars tournament with Damon at, with the belt going. My second player can pick up whatever they want. At the end of the day, I'm probably picking up eight points from this title shot. 
whoever it is. And I don't have to worry about it. So, the, and again, I think that changes the game if he loses because then those eight points are up for grabs and that's a big deal versus I think if you're, you know, if you're not Roxy Stryer, you're managing under the assumption that those eight points aren't up for grabs right away. And if you get there, you get there and you go for it. But, you know, putting your focus into other places might not be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. And again, and I know, and it's kind of the thing that comes up anytime anybody has talked about the Star Wars division this season so far is dot, dot, dot. But what about the Dragon Con players? Yeah, and, and like, I mean, we're that's slowly going to whole... get we're, we're slowly going to get to see wh- what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yeah, I, if, I, I yeah. If every other player is putting up a perfect game, who knows what's going to happen? Like at that point, I th- this whole division's on its head at that point, and the, then you have to probably try to pull an inner geekdom somehow. I don't know how you do that because inner geekdom is just c- way way harder now. It is, I don't know. I know why they did what they did, but holy shit. You and I went from, like, doing really well watching IG matches. You and I went... Because, like, I mean, granted, I'm not a star, I'm not a Trekkie and I don't do Lord of the Rings. But, like, for the most part, I feel like if I just watched those movies, I would, you know, probably pull, like, 60%. Question, like, a correct percentage, right? And you pull better than that because you have more Star Wars than me. So, like... I feel like we we were okay, and now I what? <laughs> First question in Planet of the Apes. I got one question right all of round one, and it was Son of the Mask. Pretty that's the world you got more than one right. I don't remember, but that's the world we live in. We're like the most memorable thing I answered was Son of the Mask. It, is the IG is very different now. Is that our transition? Or do you have anything else to say about Star Wars? I, I just want to reiterate just how amazing of a match it was. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the other reasons, aside from, oh, I yeah. have to get her before she's too hot of a commodity, is someone needs to stop Laura Kelly from getting points for Winston. <laughs> that too. Because she's about to become a point cow. Like, even even if... Laura does not get the belt. She still goes into the tournament. She goes into the tournament. Yeah. (laughs) And it's just points, 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 points again. Um, I, what was I going to, oh yeah. I, what happened to Kaiser? I don't, (laughs) I'm not complaining. I love it. It's just, I think that like he babysat for Smets like once. And suddenly was like, I like being in. He was in a good mood tonight. He was vicious on backstage this week. That doesn't surprise me. I saw this one clip he puts, I think, in the Facebook group that was like him going to a porta potty and it said swag headquarters. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, I mean, he was literal toilet humor from John Kaiser. Comedy gold. I, d- dude knew what he had going into tonight. And I mean, Molly still did fantastic and he knew that. And man, that, that title match. They did a geek title match. Ooh. Uh, I. So inner geekdom's way harder now. <laughs> Just up front. Let, so let's talk, let's talk about that first. Let, let, let's see if we get all the new categories off the top here. Swashbuckling adventure. Yeah. Dystopian future time travel. Is that all one, or is it dystopian yeah. future and time travel? Dystopian future slash time travel. Okay. Okay. Uh, sci-fi fantasy. I think sci-fi fantasy's always been there. No, it hasn't. It ha- that's new. It's abs. Yeah, because it was a um, it was a singles division. That's right. That's right. It was in singles, and that's where they fit in a couple of those movies. But like now, they it's just so general. And so like Marvel's now all one category. DC's all now one category. But then Batman, Superman, Spider Man, X Men have their own categories. Yes, Transformers and TMNT. Why trans? Why Transformers? So uh, the- I get okay. I get why, but like, why make it its own? Like, why not find another category to slot it into? There's only five, mo- six movies. Seven. What's the seventh? Because you got all five of the main, yeah, live action Michael Bay. Yeah, 
the 1980s, 1980s animated Bumblebee. Oh yeah, but I I forget Bumblebee exists sometimes. Um, Even though it's probably the best like live action. That's what everybody movie. has said that it is like by a mile. It has John Cena in it. That's why. I forget that John Cena's in it. Um, I think he plays the, like the the almost comedic bad guy, like Army General, that's in every Transformers movie good, now. Good. Uh, PJ Campbell, I highly recommend anybody who has not listened to Schmodown backstage this week, go listen to it. Uh, because Ben Bateman had a great interview with PJ Campbell where they went over all the new categories, but specifically talking about the IG, talking about franchises that either only end up in because of mixed bag and therefore get underrepresented slash stuff that goes, okay, well, this has a background in geek culture. This has like an ass load of comic books that, or this started as a comic book or this spawned off like a multimedia, multimedium <clears throat> franchise. And a lot, and like a lot of it, he, he kind of used the verbiage of like, you know, if you can remember playing with toys from it from your youth, it should be in the IG. And I can't say that I disagree. Yeah, with I think that's a that's like a really good way to put it. Um, the, I mean, he, and he said it more eloquently than I did, but I that 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 was the sentiment basically. And again, I can't say he's wrong. Yeah, I oh, I, Planet of the Apes, you know, which again like has its roots in comics and. You know, he, yeah. he said like it's kind of the barring Doctor Who for obvious it's not, it's a TV show yeah. reasons. It's kind of one of the 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 uh godfathers of sci fi. You yeah. know, it's up there with Trek and Wars and you know, even though you can talk about Star Wars being sci fi or not, I don't know. You know, that's yeah, yeah it's that's, all in the discussion. To, but, that's a conversation for the Star Wars podcast. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I, like, I don't disagree with what they did by any means. And, you know, I always used to joke like, oh, okay, it's mixed bad. So is it going to be back to the future today or Indiana Jones? Because that's the only questions I ever saw out of mixed bag. And Green Hornet. That one time. (laughs) (laughs) They were like weird, like the Phantom and Dark Man questions I remember from KO matches. I feel like those weren't from mixed bag, though. I feel like they were from some other, like odd categories but unimportant so like yeah and i get why they did this because you know inner geekdom has always been the like you don't have to know as much it's like deeper knowledge pools on the individual movies but overall there's less to study and you can have like it's easier to have a strength and a weakness than in, than in singles um and we were getting to a point where it, like you had to be hitting practically perfect games every round or you were just out of the running. You know, I mean, I talked about it last week where by the numbers, I would put Chandra, I would have put Chandra, and if I did, but Chandra ahead of Mara this match, even though I wanted Mara to win. Um, Just because she's coming in from a completely different standpoint. That was before I knew about the new categories. So they were both coming into a completely new division that was way more broad. And I mean, that's where Chandra faltered, right? Because he spun graphic novels in round two. That's, I mean, that's what did him in. Uh, I, th- I think so. you're absolutely right with that. And, you know, I think with IG, it's weird because there is that more limited knowledge. It, I don't want to say limited knowledge base because. Like with Star Wars, it's, it's a deeper knowledge base, but there are less individual movies. You know, it's less of a scatter shot. Like yeah. with, with singles and teams, it can be anything. Yeah, which is, I mean, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like you know, the categories going in, like you know your your base ten from the uh, the round one, and I I assume like last season, those are going to be set in that set order every time for every match. So like the Cardinal categories. Yeah. So like I remember last season, you didn't realize it at first. And I mentioned like, okay, this is going to be this question. Like, how are you knowing these are, did you watch the match? I'm like, no, it's been this way. Every match, (laughs) like every star Wars match starts with revenge of the Sith. Um, but 
yeah, we're just in completely new territory here. And, you know, you study those 10 from the beginning, you know your wheel slices, and you know your strengths on the wheel slices, and maybe th this might open up new strengths for people. Like, going into the IG, if you, like, really love Terminator, like, if, <laughs> like I, I just picked one at random. If, you, if Terminator's, like, your franchise, and you have seen every movie 400 times, and you've memorized every frame of every movie, and every actor's name, and every director, and every director they've, sh they've shook hands with, and, like, if that's your thing... Congratulations, you have a, you can play an IG. Like, if if Transformers, if T Ethan Irwin can play because of TMNT, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you got to beat the dungeon first. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Dungeon starting on top this season, baby. For now, for now. Um, there's a cobra and a killer on their way over soon. Uh, just remember that. I don't know if you know what brown dwarf stars do to cobras and killers, but uh, it does not end well for them. I will say, you know, we the show got cut off uh, last week, as you would, as as anyone who watched or listened would know. Um, but it basically ended with Travis and I agreeing that counting Mara Canopic out was would be foolish, mm -hmm. and. You know, we, we talked about the fact that there would be new categories Did last we? week. We mentioned it because we knew there would be. We just didn't know to what extent. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about it, you and I both were like, okay, Indiana Jones gets a slice. Back to the, the future, future gets, gets a slice. slice. Which they don't. They get the, yeah, they, they get, don't. They're, they're, they're still in like subcategories. But the, like they're the easy, like, okay, time travel, back to the future. And sw swash, I love that it's called swashbuckling. That was whoever made that decision. You deserve a raise. <laughs> um, probably PJ Campbell. Probably. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he's just chugging his sprite. I wanted the rest of it. Um, that said, you know, I am really, really intrigued as to what the future of the IG looks like. Because off the top of my head, because like, again, there were like we have we have our players that go in like most IG people go in with like their with their top fandom that they're kind of locked and loaded as like being a breeze for them and having like a passing knowledge. Not I mean anybody who's competing in the IG, especially in like a high rank, has way more than a passing knowledge of anything on that board. But comparatively. A passing knowledge next to whatever that individual person's number one fandom is. For example, Mike Kalinowski <laughs> goes in wanting a DC slice because that's his number one like boo thing in the IG. Damon is gonna want to spin Star Wars stuff like that. Is James Bond on any category in the IG? You mentioned KO, and it got me thinking. I don't think so. I don't remember. I do know that in singles, there's a new Sean Connery slice. Okay. Because oh. I re specifically remembering, I specifically remember on backstage, they're kind of being in unison. Uh Oh, more opportunities for bond. <laughs> so, um, cause like, I feel like now singles are not singles. Um, I, I just think they like really revved up inner geek them to be more like singles now that it has so much in it. I think the, despite what we saw tonight, the uh, correct question percentage is going to go way down uh, as people readjust. I think that we're going to start finding more players that aren't, you know, a Mike Kalinowski, a Chandru, a Mara Kanopic, but have their, like, one golden category that can get them through a match. Let, you know, my my example is the, the meme-ish streak of Kalinowski spinning Bond. Like, <laughs> like there's going to be you, one lucky prick that's just like Star Trek, Star, Star Trek, Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> or, you know, because the new ones, like swashbuckling, right? They're like, I, you know, I fuck with Indiana Jones and Pirates of the Caribbean, and if I can spin that slice, I pretty much have this game on lock. Um, that kind of thing. Where, like, you have more of those opportunities now where it isn't, 
like, okay, my thing is the MCU, but that only goes so far. You know, you can only get so far in the MCU. Here, I, I actually, I... I, tell me if you I, I can't quite tell if you and I are on the same page or not, because in my opinion, I think people's golden category, people's golden categories just became all but a moot point. OK, I think so, it is too diverse, because if you look at the IG of old, right? Yeah, you have like it's your, all sorry. It, it is it is almost all completely current and recent blockbuster franchises. Yeah, and I I think the difference we're going because like, you know, like you said, Kalinowski had DC, Rachel Cushing had Lord of the Rings, um, Damon has Star Wars, and now you're not looking at individual franchises, but what that opens up is somebody who is like really I mean Damon's also really into Indiana Jones, really into Indiana Jones. Someone who's really into Back to the Future. Someone who's um, really into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Transformers. And now suddenly they have a stake in inner geekdom because, you know, again, they probably have a passing knowledge of these other things. But now they have that category that can just drive them home through a match. See, I, 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 your, I, your logic is sound and clear. I still feel like even even if that movie franchise they love is embedded in another category, at that point you know what's in that category. I I feel like I, I feel like IG is too big for people to have their haymaker categories anymore. I think it's more like singles where I, I think it's a lot more like singles where like yeah, like again, it, it's well, the I meme think, with KO and Bond. I think people still have haymaker categories in singles it's just a more broad like they can still miss that's the difference it's like you're not going to be like i spun bond i got a perfect round it's going to be a spun i spun swashbucklers i'm probably going to only have to go to multiple choice on one question i spun time travel i'm probably going to get this you know like i'll miss one and you're not going to get it either so I, yeah you I, know it's it's not so much the damon spun star wars you can turn off the match for five minutes <laughs> i I think this is better phrasing. I think veteran players are gonna ha are are in for a rude awakening. I yes, because I mean that's what we saw today. Yeah, that there is the that expectation of it is these core, current, popular, established franchises, and it went the the ig the the the, the tone of it. This is so weird and so specific. It feels like Steel City Comic Con now. I it, mean, it just feels like a Comic Con. It, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's specifically like the around here because there's so little like actual comic book stuff. When you compare it to, it's more a pop culture thing, mm -hmm. not comic books. Ex you know, exclusively, like you go to Steel City Con. Most of, the, like, most of the cosplays are like fucking Ghostbusters and stuff like that. There's a booth dedicated to like a to, to a DeLorean replica or the, the Flux Capacitor. It's no longer just like this weird, not weird, but like this pantheon of just Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, you know, or Wizarding World and Middle Earth. I think it's so big now. I think a lot of fans of those franchises would have been okay with you saying Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. I know. I, you know, <laughs> you know go on with how they describe it. Um, I also hate that every single Wizarding World question I have heard in the past six months has been about crimes of Grindelwald. Jesus Christ. Ask me. <laughs> a, I say that like there wasn't a Deathly Hallows question somewhere in there, but oh my God, can you ask a question about any other movie, please? You're trying to burn through all of the Grindelwald It's the questions. one I didn't watch, and it's the one I will refuse to watch. Please give me anything else. That's funny. Um, we've talked a lot about like the state of IG, but we haven't actually talked much about the match. Um, I, we've been talking about the shit about like all the 
correct percentage rate's going to go down, and these veterans are in for a rude awakening. Meanwhile, I think there was a total of two missed, four. There was four missed questions. They both missed one in round one. Yeah, which for Chandru is a travesty, <laughs> which says a I, lot about his record. I think Chandru played like he always does. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, they both missed one in round one. They both missed one in round two. And where Chandru lost the points was he went to multiple choice once because he spun a category he didn't like. And that he still did fantastic. And then he bet one point less in the betting round, which did surprise me because... He's generally really good. I mean, he hit a five pointer for Star Trek. He's generally really good with Star Trek, and I don't know why. I mean, unless he just like he should have gone rogue and not listened to Winston when they were talking in code. Lots of that going around these days, a- apparently. But like, <laughs> I don't know why he wasn't confident in hitting that three in hitting that uh, betting round question. You know, I don't know what got in his head that he was like, "It's a Star Trek question. I might not be able to get it." In the grand scheme of things, it didn't matter because he still would have been down a point. Um, but yeah, I that that was all the difference. Like they hit, they had the exact same correct answer rate, which is insane. Espe- especially, and I I think Mora again had the benefit of coming in fresh. Because, you know, I mean, even Chandru was the product of a division that had become so hyper focused. You know, you know, we had our big six or seven, whatever, and you had to be able to at least get, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the questions in every single one. And then you needed to have at least one that you could always hit. Um, and I think Chandru was able to like, ins- I don't think he ever had one that was his super strength. He just rose them all to 90 percent. I would say that I think uh, Middle Earth and Wizarding World were probably his strongest, though. Yeah, but like the, the difference, like for him, the difference would have been like a five percent hit rate. No, oh, yeah, 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 you know? for sure. I'm I'm just saying in general, like that's what makes him so dangerous. Yeah, is that like is that I, you know, where Kalinowski's at a ninety nine for DC and maybe like an eighty for everything else, he's at a ninety for everything and maybe like a ninety two for Harry Potter. And now he doesn't have that. And apparently it doesn't matter. So <laughs> I am really, really, really fascinated to see what this freshman class of inner geekdom players brings. Like you, <laughs> you're forging this class of player that was like born on playing on like some kind of expert difficulty. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like this, this is, this is something that is very fascinating to me is the new IG class. Because again, when I heard new categories, I, I probably, I probably could have figured, okay, maybe we'll get something like Ninja Turtles to spice things up. Um, I think it's brilliant to do specific category or character categories for stuff like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and the X-Men. Yeah. You know, a, cause my two favorite superheroes have a whole category now, <laughs> but on top of that, and all of those, all of those individual characters or franchises have enough movies to warrant that. Yeah. You know? So it, especially, I mean, you, there's movies in there. You don't think of like mask of the phantasm, which is really fun. I keep coming back to backstage this week. PJ Campbell, the, like somebody sent in a super chat asking about animated DC movies and addressed killing joke and mask of the phantasm directly because killing joke did have a limited release in theaters. That's gross. Imagine paying like $25. I mean, I paid that much for the Blu-ray. I think imagine paying $25 to see the killing joke movie in a theater and being in a room full of other comic book fans. Once Bruce and Barbara start, I I think I would have just bat wings. I think I would have, committed unalive in the movie lobby. I, I dude, <laughs> I would have been, no, I would have gone out like, yeah, that was, that was okay. That was, I would have gone out of it. Like it was Batman V Superman. Cause I came out of that going, that could have been worse. <laughs> you know, like I could have hated that more. 
technically. Um, but he and, and PJ Campbell said he said he's like you know we've asked questions about Mask of the Phantasm before. Mask of the Phantasm had a full like theatrical run. It's also one of the best Batman movies ever made. It is. I think Mask of the Phantasm occupies the same space that Spider Verse does for Spider Man. Uh yeah, I could see that. I think that it's a really fun kind of mirror image of it. Like, oops, we made an animated movie that's better than anything you'll ever get. Yeah. So, and then you end up with like the two movies that end up at every, at the top of everybody's list, and it it's it, for most people ends up being the Dark Knight and Mask of the Phantasm. And then Spider Verse and Spider Man Two, mm-hmm. um, which conversation for a different day. I I love that it came down the mask of the phantasm. <laughs> I think it was really in a very funny way, kind of teased earlier this week for people who were keeping up with all the uh, uh, kickoff for the live event tonight. But yeah, I, I it, it was insane and. Um, I think the rookie class has a leg up this season because they don't have the shell shock of having to be in a new division. Yeah, now. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, and Mara kind of falls into that category as well. Well, like, even though she, she has, she honestly, she was probably primed to win tonight because of that, where yeah. having, having played it all before was a benefit to her that she was like, I know how the showdown mostly works. There's been a few tweaks here and there, but like the general structure is the same. The gameplay has not changed. The game itself has. Yeah. And I, so, you know, she's comfortable there. She's comfortable playing for a belt. She has these new categories, but she has the time to study. And it's not like she's been hyper studying for two years away on an Island somewhere. Get it? Cause the promo. Um, yeah. Speaking of which I wish everybody watching and listening right now, could have heard Travis's Dude. reaction to those very, very large burners. I love and industrial gas burners, stovetops. <laughs> Dude, I... It, like, when I eventually go house hunting for myself, that's, like, the big thing is the kitchen. That's where I'm going to, like, stake my claim of, like, this is what I need in my house. Everything. It could have, like, literally a bedroom that only fits a bed. I don't care. Like, I, I need a good kitchen. Everything else... I don't, I don't care. I don't need it. Um, That's how I am about a living. I need a bitching living room. Preferably, I like a kitchen, like an open floor concept kind of thing. Okay. I, I love that shit. I had it, I've had it in two apartments I've lived in, and it is so nice to be able to cook and still bullshit with your friends. It's perfect. A hundred percent agree on that. I, I Being able to turn like the an entire section of the house into like one mega room. Yeah. Like oh, just yeah. one, one, you know, balls out mega room. Turn that bitch into a movie theater. Any, anyway, I can. You got it. me going because of the goddamn burners. Yeah, it's great. It's <laughs> awesome. But uh, I think I think Mara coming in kind of cold here, going oh, okay. This is like a new division. She was so primed. She was so primed to win this belt. And it, and it, 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 on paper, that should have been a disadvantage. Like this is a real like, for, for patrons. This was whenever Spencer and I last season for the versus series were doing the Grand Inquisitor versus Kid Fisto. We were talking about how because they ended up in a confined space for their arena, the Inquisitor would not be able to use like the Buzzsaw Saber, mm-hmm. and that if he attempted to use the Buzzsaw Saber, he would create a situation where Kid Fisto would almost certainly cut him in two. But because we we put the Grand Inquisitor in a situation where he had to basically do that Count Dooku style fencing, he won the rock, paper, scissors of like the martial arts styles. Because in theory, he was at a disadvantage because he couldn't use his weapon to the fullest. It ended up backfiring on the person it should have advantaged. (laughs) Because now you've created a very specific set of circumstances that spell doom for the person who on paper should be the one to have the upper hand now. Mm -hmm. It's that same kind of like you accidentally had something backfire happened here. Yeah. 
And I think now, because again, and it's not like Chandru played poorly or like it not really, at all. It, he, he played, he played fantastic. We shit on Chandru the character all the time because, like, I feel like that's the point. He did a phenomenal job and has done a phenomenal job up to this point. And I think now, we he went into this new format unfazed, missed like two questions, and because of some managing error, didn't come out on top. Does he reconcile with Winston and go again, or does he try to leave? And if he tries to leave, I feel like he's going to want to stay a heel. So, does he leave also for corruption? That's an interesting I, question, because I, I, I don't know if... Cause, that's my thing. Like, I don't know where he goes as a heel because he goes to the dungeon, but he doesn't like Kaiser. So I don't know. I feel like you, you have, you know, swag is kind of like a neutral faction. Mm -hmm. Like it has a mix of good guys and bad guys. It has Ace and Chandru on the same faction. Like it's yeah. You you have a face and a heel right there. Like it it, it, can, it can cohabitate both types of players. Corruption, like I've you know always said, and some of the reason why I like them, they're kind of the anti-hero faction. Like we don't have a dedicated heel faction. No, we have like most of the people in Corruption are heels. Ko is a heel. Chance is a heel. You know, I know Laura Kelly isn't in there anymore. Obviously, she's on swag right now. But, like, you know, Laura was a heel. And the dungeon is made up mostly of heels, but none of them are, like, Andrew Guy when he was a heel. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, none of them are, like, super villains right now. I think the Den kind of has, like, Den, the Den kind of has that vibe of like, we're the assholes. The Den has a vibe? I mean, it's close to one. <laughs> like, I, you know what I'm they, saying? Yeah. I, I don't know. The exchange also, I don't know. It, I, I think it's good that there isn't like a specific heel faction. Because mm -hmm. that fosters the ability to have these like nice cross sections. Of different types of players and different type of character work. Um, I don't think every anybody or everybody in the den is an asshole. By the way, I like that's the like the hey pfft, vibe. Where anyway, I every time we do a show, I feel like I have like really insulted a group of people. And I'm a fan of everybody. It's it's the character work I'm referring to. Anyhow, I don't know where Chandru would go. I don't think there's room for him at corruption. I don't think so either. I don't think Shannon would have him and to begin with. <laughs> saying that, yeah, of course. But that's saying that out loud. I was like, as I was about to say, like, well, this doesn't make any sense, which is why now I have to say it with a question mark attached to it. Because I just don't know where he goes if he tries to leave. And because I think if, I think if he tries to leave, someone will scoop him up. Because it's Chandru and he, the, the dude's going to wreck shop in inner geekdom. So, I, yeah, I'm not sure what his plans are. I think it's just as likely he reconciles with Winston and they work something out. I think that's my, you know. I don't think he goes to Finstock. Uh, <laughs> I don't, no. If he, if I don't, he ran. I don't see him at all. I could see Tom scooping him up. I don't see him liking working with Tom. That's my thing. I don't know who he else he'd like to work with. Roxy? Who does Roxy trade? I think Brandon if, Hanna. I was going to say, if shit goes left with Brandon Hanna. <laughs> oh, no. I that, can't. Would be, that would be a really interesting mid-season trade. I feel like at that point, uh, poor, poor Brandon Hanna. No, I don't think this poor Brandon Hanna. I think if, I think if he I think if he loses and then Roxy and then Chandra's like I want to leave swag, and Roxy's like okay I'll give you I'll give Winston Brandon Hanna. I think that I think that conversation goes in a completely different direction. I think that conversation is 
Brandon Hanna is killing it or very clearly has the capacity to kill it right now. Shit isn't working between Sean Drew and Winston. And the deal is I will take your on fire prospect for my former champion. I think that's how that conversation goes. That that the onus is on the idea that Brandon Hanna has champion material. So you're training him for somebody who already was a champ. That okay, is that's I've, my logic on like I how think, that conversation goes. I think we're going from different directions because I'm saying Roxy's initiating the trade and you're saying Winston is. I think that's the difference. Yeah, oh, okay. I, yeah, I'm that saying makes Roxy, sense. Roxy's like, I tried Brandon, he didn't work out. I'm gonna offer him for Shandrew. And I think that like just really that's just being mean. Twist the knife, twist <laughs> the knife, twist the knife. Um and also I don't think Roxy's that kind of manager. No, I think I think it would have to be that Chandru and Winston collectively went, This isn't working anymore. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to find a new home. Roxy Stryer's really, 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 really good at taking care of her players and taking care of her people. You know, the stars have become this like little mini family. I want to go there. And it's like, okay, what can you offer me? And it's her going, well, Winston, to a certain extent, you're good at managing IG. You're good at help helping people hit their stride. Maybe you can't get them all the way. Maybe you can't keep them all the way. But, you know, you got ace to a title shot. You got ace through a... Uh, it's very distracting with the filters. That's horrifying. What the shit is that? I think it's a uh, like a dragon from Chinese New Year's. It okay? I was right. Okay, because part of part of the part of the head was cut off, and it looked like okay. I need to. I okay, dead ass. The way your head is in her picture, I couldn't see a big chunk of it. It looked like it just looked fuzzy, so I thought it was like a unicorn head, but with like blood dripping down from where the horn would be. That's terrifying. <coughs> My thoughts exactly. Um, but yeah, so I think that was perfect vamping because I I'm choking for no reason right now. Good. Uh, <laughs> so I think our last. Oh man's dead. Boy is dead. I think. I don't know. I think there's something I'm breathing in in here because this is the second time we've been doing a show where I just get a really bad tickle in my throat. Um, I think the last real talking point is Sean, yeah Chandra's point at the end, which was that Inner Geekdom used to be a very different league. And Mara cashed in a title shot she had from two years ago. That I don't know. We don't know why she's coupons don't have an expiration day. And they used to give out a lot of coupons. Well, that's the thing is that again, the league was a very different thing. And I think especially for inner geekdom that didn't wasn't as formalized, had only just had its first tournament and wasn't a lot of these players weren't like regulars at the Schmodown anyway, and so you had to catch them on their day off, you know? You have people like, you know, Hector Navarro and Adam Holovic, who, you know, aren't players anymore, but, you know, look at Hector and Adam's bodies of work, you know? Here's what I will say. I think that at the time... uh, Oh, my God. I just lost his name. How did I do that? Jason Inman. Jesus Christ. I, said, um, I cannot help you. You have not given me I know. any I was, I, I was just about to just keep saying, like, cap. 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 That There's would not have helped say. me. I know, because all Cause, of them cosplay Captain America. Um, it's like a rite of passage. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I At the time, I think Jason Inman... Was I think if Jason Inman had one more title defense, like if he had beaten Mara Kanopic, Jason Inman would have become the IG Alex Damon. Maybe the IG Sam Witwer because 
Jason wasn't able to compete anymore. So he kind of just then, vanished at his zenith. <laughs> and everyone would just kind of go, okay, but what if Inman comes back? Yeah. So because Jason left, because it felt like Jason Inman was about to become this unbeatable, unstoppable force of friggin' nature, and Mara beat him. And KO clearly had what it took to potentially beat Mara. The, 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 the desire to do everything in their power to keep having them cross paths, I think, was like at a premium. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially you have less players in the division to begin with. And you have less people like... There's just less title shots. There's less number one contenders. There's less. He said the name of the podcast. Wrap wrap the show. (laughs) I think I said it earlier, too. I don't remember. I mean, it probably did. It wasn't number one. The undercard was a number one contender match. It sure was. Um, What if we only covered number one contender matches? (laughs) Our upload schedule would be very, very very sparse. Um, But in those episodes, we covered every match in between. God, that'd be terrible. Oh. That's a terrible idea. Let's do it. You couldn't pay me. No, no, you could not pay me enough money. <laughs> Six hour shows. No, uh, uh, oh, uh, no. Um, you and I are dead inside after something like fandom. Oh, dude, Don't double even... the double fandom. Ew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still talking about the Snyder cut. Hey, it's okay. Now that we have this, we can. We can do live streams during that kind of thing and then just talk about the big shit on an actual episode. That's think about how more efficient <laughs> this shit will be from now on. That reminded me of actually something I, I needed to bring up, not Smodown related in a minute, but um not on the show, because Smodown show. Uh I well Rematches. Yeah. Should Chandra get a rematch? Yes. Um, I mean, I guess. I think a precedent has been set in the IG, especially because people get really rematch. People get really rematch doling out happy. Uh huh. Does he. In the IG historically, and because the likelihood of retaining about in the IG is lower. And so, Chandru has done it. I think he deserves it. At the very least, let this be the end of you just get a rematch cuz. So, well, okay, that's the question though. Does he get a rematch or does he get a number one contender coupon that he can cash in at any point? I think that's the difference. We're like, if this is going to be the last one, I think it should be done in the way that Mara's. I mean, I don't know if that's how Mara's was initially. It might have just been a free rematch, but it was pretty much a title shot. If if, I'm, if I remember correctly, which it is, was basically like a carte blanche. Like you can take your pick at whoever has the belt, and, and I, it, it originally was you ha- you have a shot at KL, and then her schedule changed, mm-hmm. and she wasn't able to compete. And then Smets rose up, and then everything be- became Smets v KO, and people went, "Oh, well, Mara's taking her time." Um. So but, yeah, I, I think I think the easiest way to reconcile this is that like after this, IG moves to the standard of you don't get a rematch unless you have three defenses. I think, and because that's just going to be impossible, and. Give Chandru his number one contender coupon, or that he gets the cash whenever. Um, but here's the, here's the kicker: Does he get to play in the tournament if he hasn't cashed it by then? I say yes because that's you get a title shot of your choosing for winning the free for all, right? Yeah. Okay. You make a good point. So, okay. That you do. That's correct. I don't know if that's changed this season. I don't think so. I have not completely read the rule book yet. 
That's on my to-do list for this weekend is to read the rule book in its entirety. I um, like I skimmed it. I'm not sure if that's actually in there anywhere. I'd have to double check. But um yeah, I think you're right. And those so I think in that case, yeah, just give them the title shot coupon and then we'll go on with the season and that gives good drama. If like hell, if somehow Kalinowski gets the belt again and now we get to see Chandra V. Kalinowski, right? Yeah, I, I think at if, the very least this should be the like you said the last time. Yeah, oh absolutely. That, and and I think that the reason the main reason I say that is because it was Tamara who got here on a pass given to her from a bygone era of the Schmodown. Mm-hmm. That and I don't want to say that like the, that 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 is the only reason why she even got to play Chandra. I think with her re-entering the league and the IG division. This matchup is, was, and always would have been inevitable. This is, I mean, this is on a level of Sam Witwer is back in Star Wars. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just like one of the, I mean, there's a reason that it was a big deal that Drew McQueenie and JTE are back, right? Like we, it is such a big deal. They're, they're trivia gods. It's such a big deal to have them back because now you have this whole new entity you have to, well, I guess old entity that hasn't been there. That forever. you have to retrofit into the new yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. You know, there there's that little bit. It's not as bad as as, as it is in Star Wars, but with Inner Geekdom, it was okay. I need to make sure that I can tango with Kalinowski, uh, Cushing, and I, you know for a little bit Smets, and then. Okay, so now I need to make sure I can tango with with Chandru, if that needs to happen. And it's never like your focus. <coughs> I think that's one of the best things about the IG <coughs> right now, is that I'm good. I don't know how that happened. I yeah. think I'm just talking a lot. <laughs> I I think that again, in the ways that IG is becoming more more and more like singles. Yeah, is well, that like, you have this like in singles? You have to make sure, like, okay, I can tango with Rope. Yeah, I can you have tango this, with Merle. There's this really, if I need to. They, they aren't the front of my mind, but I know at some point I will have to play them to prove myself in teams. I have to, you know, not founding fathers anymore, but I have to be able to play corruption. I have to be able. Our team has to be able to go toe to toe with Shazam or um, final odd, exam, final exam, odd couple, right? Like th- those teams that are just. They're always preeminent. In- they are always just kind of like looming over the division, where but, before it was basically like and, in IG and like Star Wars. It's like here's the champ. Now everybody's gonna fight all over each other to get up here. I think IG was less than that. I think I, I think IG gen- like generally was just a bunch of championship players just cycling in and out. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> and I sisterhood think, of the traveling belt. Yeah. <laughs> And we've entered now a period of I need to deal with Chandru, Mike Kalinowski, and I guess now Chance Ellison. And the having Mara re-enter is such a big deal because she's another player to go, okay, I need to make sure I can I can play Mara Kanopic. Having yeah. having JTE come back in is like I need to make sure I can play JTE's team. I need to make sure I can go toe-to-toe with Drew McQueenie's team. That like just that little bit in your head of going like, okay, I need to make sure that in any, like when the time comes, we are ready to deal with this, that, you know, Mar Mara is that tier of player for IG and obviously proved it tonight. So I agree. Uh, Travis, do you have any final thoughts on, uh, this, this opening match or this opening night for season eight? Dungeons back, baby. Begun the Schmo War has. Travis, where can the lovely people find you, brother? They can find me on Twitter and Instagram, coughing very loudly into my hoodie at Travis Political. Jared? Yes. Where? <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, coughing in that direction uh, at Dark Jedi 2552. And you can find the Nerd Academy podcast. On Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com. 
<laughs> where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus, Case and Breon, the Waffle Wizard, Delta 9, and Zach Canals. You will pay for uh, Cookie Cop's jaw surgery he apparently needs because his mouth is, like, oddly displaced. Yeah, I noticed that whenever I was on Bombad Cast like a week or two ago, and I went to pick him up. Is it like? I say, be careful. The last time we moved him around, he took over Bombad Cast Twitter. <laughs> His mouth doesn't move anymore, folks. And it is infinitely creepier now because his mouth isn't fucking moving. Um, I don't think his eye... He didn't blink either. I didn't hear his eyes shudder. Stop. Nope, yeah. Move away from the cookie jar. Oh, wow. The, yeah, that's... The motor that does it is running, but his eyes are not moving. I didn't know we found a way to make Cookie Cop scarier. Um, <clears throat> now we just need to wait for his batteries to die again. Oh, God. It'll happen during a con. I hope it does. Please end the show. Don't let the demons have its time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the demon have its time is just how we should engage with the Republican Party from now on. Facts. Ted Cruz got on a on a plane to Cancun. Don't let the demon have its time. <laughs> um. Check out the $5 tier of our Patreon where you get access to our patron-exclusive shows such as the Knights of the Nerd Republic versus series. Uh, February's matchup was Ray Skywalker versus Barris Ophi. March is going to be Kyle Katarn versus Darth Malgus. Tune in for that. We got Travis and I talking some Sam Wilson, Captain America at some point at the end of the month, which is rapidly approaching because we do this to ourselves every time with Heroic History 101. When will we learn? The answer is never. We have our Black History Month specials for Nerd Academy Movie Club. We are doing Fruitvale Station. That's already up on there. We're doing Creed. We got the audio commentary up there. We're going to be recording the review at some point soon. We're doing Black Panther. And for March, because I'm a monster and I think it'll be fun, we're covering the Zack Snyder DC movies in honor of the Snyder Cut. Mm. I hate. I was going to be a dick and go, so we're going to do the ultimate cut of BVS. <laughs> I might actually watch that finally to prep for. I don't need to see Man of Steel, but I think I need to watch BVS again, and I want to watch old Justice League one more time. I think watching the ultimate cut is absolutely worth it. In my opinion. And I guarantee by the end of watching it, I will disagree with you heavily. You probably will. At the $10 tier. Yes. You get the audio commentaries at the $10 tier. Uh, or no, you get early access at the $10 tier for Campus Life and Movie Club. And you get our audio commentaries on the $5 tier, along with Heroic History and the Versus series. And if you'd like to support the Nerd Academy podcast even further, I don't have my shirt with me, but you can yeah. go ahead and check out our Tee Public, where you can get all manner of Nerd Academy merch. Click on the student store link and get pillows and like the sticker on my laptop and water bottle and my mask that's somewhere in my coat across the room and the myriad shirts and hoodies that we all have get stuff with our logo on it and even an artist rendition of us as superheroes and Jedi. It's great stuff. Anyhow, thank you all so much for listening and maybe I'll think of an outro for this show. One day. One day. Maybe. We'll see.